Welcome to Arch Linux. If you're running the latest install, everything should go smoothly for you. If for some reason something fails, then resort to the Arch Wiki. I'm running Arch in a virtual machine. So, some things may seem different for you than it is to me. However, the basics should be this. Check and see if you have internet. I'm going to ping Google. I have a solid connection. If for some reason you have a wireless interface that you need to connect to your computer to, then feel free to use IWCPL. Do station list and see which stations or wireless interfaces that you have. Do station connect and then your network name. And then it'll ask you for a passkey. Since I'm already connected to the internet, I do not need to do that. Next, type in arch install. It's going to ask us for our keyboard layout. I'm going to use United States. I live in the United States, so I'm going to select four. Next is going to ask us which hard drive we want to use. Yours may be different. Yours may have a different dev file. But since I only have one in here that is 8 gigabytes, I'm going to sell it to one. And enter. We can either wipe or select if we need to make individual partitions. I'm going to wipe all. We're going to use the file system ext4. I'm going to leave no disk encryption. I'm not going to use swap. However, if you have a large hard drive, feel free to use swap. Give your computer a name. I'm going to call mine Archbox. And next, we're going to create a root password. And now we're going to select our desktop environment. Either use Xorg, which installs basically everything that you need for any desktop environment. You can either have a server, which provides various server packages, or if you want a minimal, it will basically just install it without any desktop environments. Or if you want a desktop, which you might want to use, feel free to do hit zero and enter. We have all of these desktop environments. Which one do I use? Well, the ones I would suggest are using GNOME, KDE, XFCE4, and Cinnamon. However, if you're familiar with other ones like Awesome, i3 or mate feel free to use those but for the sake of simplicity i'm going to use xfce4 next you're going to select the graphics driver since i'm in a virtual machine i'm going to press 5. if you have a nvidia driver i would suggest going for the proprietary driver since they work a little bit better or if you have an amd graphics card feel free to use amd and press 0. but since i'm in a virtual machine i'm gonna press 5. Depending on your audio or what you're going to do for audio, you might just want to use Pulse Audio if you're just doing basic media consumption. However, if you're doing audio work, music, or audio editing, I would suggest using Pipewire or some other version of Jack later in the install. But since I'm just doing basic media consumption, I'm going to use Pulse Audio. Next is our kernel. Our kernel is very important. However, since we are doing a basic install, I would just consider using the regular Linux kernel. Next, we have extra packages. You don't want to type in anything here except for NeoFetch and Firefox. Actually, let's not remove. Let's remove Firefox. We can, re we can add that later. We are just going to install NeoFetch. We're going to use Network Manager. Now we're going to type in our time zone. If you don't know your time zone, feel free to look it up or just use UTC. I live on the west coast of the United States, so I'm going to use US time zone. I would say yes to time synchronization, although you can decline. And then we are ready. Press enter to continue, and it will count down to formatting our hard drive. Then we will start installing Arch Linux. 
and everything that we need for our Arch install. This can take a little bit depending on your hardware, however, I'm going to pause this and I'll come back when it's done, or until I run into an error. If you run into errors during this process, it might be because of some other program that you wanted to install earlier. This happens a lot, and it happens very commonly. However, the best thing you can do is to make sure that you don't install any additional packages right now until the ones that you get later. However, I will come back. Once you get to this point, you are going to want to press yes for the truth environment. Basically, you're going into your install to configure everything else. And we're going to have to configure our install because we are not completely finished. We still have to add our user, the user password, and some other programs. I'm going to type in Y and enter. If it does not show up red, there is an easy way to get around this. All you have to do is figure out what your device name is and do lsblk. You can find that our drive is mounted onto a slash mnt slash arch install. We can either do arch root slash mnt slash arch install. And you can get back in pretty easily. If for some reason that does not work for you, there's an easy way to mount it on. You can mount your drive anyways. Do, you can do mount slash dev sda2 slash mnt and then arch truth into slash mnt. But next we're going to install some basic programs like Firefox. Let's do pacman slash s Firefox. Next, we're going to add our user. I'm going to use your add, then your name. Then we're going to do slash m. This will help the lightdm service figure out that we have an actual directory in the users. Then we're going to have to add ourselves to the wheel group so we can use sudo permissions. So do dash g wheel. If you have no error, then everything has worked fine. But even though we've added ourselves to the wheel group, we still don't have sudo permissions. Do we fix that? Well, we have to go to the sudoers file. Go to cd etsy, and we can vim into sudoers. Then we want to go all the way down until we see percent sign wheel all equals all, all. Now when you try deleting it, nothing happens. That's because you need to hit insert, and then you can edit. We can uncomment, uncomment the members of the wheel group, and then we can do escape, semicolon, wq, exclamation point, and now we are basically ready to go into our Arch install. So I forgot one small thing. You need to do pass wd space and then your username. I forgot to do this during the tutorial. Make sure you do that now. So if there's any other packages that you want to do, do pacman slash s, and then type in the packages that you want. If those packages do not exist, they may exist in the Arch user repository, which you don't want to do right now. However, we can do this after going to our Arch install. So go ahead, do exit, and boot. While rebooting, I would highly suggest taking out your optical drive or your drive that has that ISO. If you go into this GNU scrub menu after rebooting, then you have successfully installed Arch Linux. Good job! And now we can log in with our normal name. Next, do NeoFetch. You're successfully now an Arch user. Great job! Continue on without me, or you can go on to my next video where I'll discuss what to do after installing Arch Linux. That's all I have for today. Have a good day, and enjoy your Arch Linux install.